Before I begin this video, I just want to extend a huge heartfelt thank you to everyone who supported this channel in spite of what I believe were some audio and visual hiccups. So without further ado, let's get into the 10 minute teach of Cosmic Frog by Jim Felly. In Cosmic Frog, you'll be controlling a two mile high frog who resides in the aether and whose sole purpose in life is to hop along and scoop up giant chunks of land and stuff them down their stretchy esophagus, also known as a gullet. There, they will vomit or regurgitate that up into their vault, and hopefully they'll have the highest score at the end of the game. Beware though, as other frogs will be trying to accomplish the same mission. And if that weren't enough to contend with, you'll also have to watch out for dangerous splinter strikes, which can crash down onto the shard. In order to score points, you as the frog will need to hop onto highlands or lowlands, harvest those, which will then drop into your gullet. And when you feel you have enough land inside of your gullet, you're going to hop into the aether and then disgorge your land tiles into your vault. Each of the 84 hexes in the game contains a barren land tile. Most of them are going to be blank on the underside. Some actions in the game will cause the barren land tiles to be removed from the game. When they're removed from the game, we always check the back for one of these fracture tiles. If one of those is discovered, that means that the shard has suffered some sort of damage and will now need to be placed on the shard integrity track. Scoring tiles consist of lowlands, as seen here. These are slightly more abundant than the highlands, but they're also worth less victory points at the end of the game. The chunkier highlands represent fewer pieces, but higher victory points. There exists a relationship between the highlands and the lowlands. As you can see here, the representative columns makes up each land domain. So you have the mountain and the hill, you have the mesa and the desert, the lake and the swamp, and the forest and the meadow. When it comes to in-game scoring, we're concerned with two different categories of scoring. The first being placement points, and the second being diversity points. Placement points are concerned with the following, having a straight line of the same lands. A straight line in a column is one way to accomplish this. Diagonally is another way. And rows are also acceptable. In this example here, we have four hill lowlands in a straight line, which would score us 10 points. Secondly, we are scoring for diversity of our land domains represented. In this example, we only have one domain represented, which is the stone domain, because we have hills and mountains, which would actually net us zero points. In this example, we now have three different land domains because we have the stone, we have the plant, and we have the water domain. Now that we've been given a foundation for how the game is scored and won, let's go over how the game is played. At any time, your frog is going to be in one of two places. They will either be on one of these tiles here and be considered to be on the shard, or they will be off the tiles and be considered in the aether. An important thing to note in Cosmic Frog is that there's not a set turn order. Instead, your actions are derived from this action deck. So, Whichever frog's color is drawn, that is the frog that will go. Note that when drawing the action cards, occasionally instead of drawing a player's action card, a splinter strike, which is a strike that will land on a shard and destroy tiles, and an aether flux, which can cause mutations and force players to draw new ability cards. While on the shard, the actions available to you are attack, harvest, leap, recover, and slipstream. When taking the leap action, a frog is allowed to leap the amount of hexes equal to the number of empty spaces in their gullet. Frogs who want to fill up their gullet and head to the aether must use the leap action to jump into the aether. This can be done whether they're jumping off the edge or into one of the empty spots on the map where the aether is exposed. Harvesting means that the frog will take the top land tile off of the tile that they're currently on, which will then drop to the very bottom of their gullet. Your gullet is filled from the top down 
and the land tiles will fall all the way to the bottom. If for whatever reason you decide to put another piece of land tile into your gullet, all the other land tile pieces will shift down one spot and the bottom one in the four slot will slide down into your belly where it will be consumed by the cosmic fires that burn within you. Each frog will have oomph. Oomph is used to take extra actions and use special abilities in the game. These are represented by these little white crystals here that start off the game and you're available. And as they're used up, will be moved down to the expended. As an action in the game, you can take the recover action, which will move all of those oomph crystals back up into the non-expended area. Frogs are allowed to pay one oomph as part of their leap action to bounce off the aether and move to any hex that is adjacent to the aether on the board, which could be here or next to an exposed aether tile. During the leap attack, a frog can actually choose to land on another frog's tile and initiate combat. Depending on where the combat takes place, whether it's on the shard or the aether, the attacker will roll a dice and the defender will roll a dice. Players will pull out their ability cards, which were dealt at the beginning of the game, and determine the color of the dice. Shard combat is the hand, Aether combat is that vortex, and vault rating is that bottom yellow lock. White colors indicate using the white dice, which is weakest and has a zero on it. Yellow dice is the intermediate and goes all the way up to the number six, starting from one. And the red dice indicates that this is the frog's strongest type of move and can go all the way up to seven and goes no less than the number two. Before combat begins, both attacker and defender will indicate whether or not they're going to overpower their role by spending two oomph, rolling two dice, and then using the higher number of those two dice. In this scenario, red rolled a five while blue rolled a two, giving red the three point advantage. First, the defender will take a knockback equal to that amount of that difference. In this case, they would move back one, two, three, Next, the attacker has a choice to make. They can either take the number of tiles from the defender's gullet equal to that difference. In this case, it would be three. And place it in their own. They can choose to harvest that land tile that the defender was on or raid that defender's vault. As a consequence of that knockback, wherever the defender ends up from the knockback, the top exposed tile will be destroyed. So in this case, if it's a barren tile, that will be destroyed, and now the frog will end up in the aether. Now let's switch things up a little bit here. Instead of combat taking place on the shard, let's go ahead and have combat on the aether. All of the same rules apply, except for a few key differences. Instead of being knocked back, a frog will end up in the outer dimensions. When a frog gets knocked back into the outer dimensions, when in the aether, the attacker can raid their vault. The attacker is able to remove the amount of land pieces and place those into their gullet. One thing to note is that for every piece of land tile stolen from a raid on a vault, the frog who is stolen from in the outer dimensions will move up each space and return to dimension zero. Otherwise, if you're stuck in the outer dimensions, when your turn is drawn, you will have to roll a white dice and then you move the amount of spaces equal to this dice to get out of the outer dimensions. If you end your turn and you are still stuck in the outer dimensions, you will take your player's action card and set it aside when you're able to return to the game, you'll actually be able to use those set aside action cards as free extra turns when you return to either the Aether or the Shard. Another action to take while on the Aether is to disgorge your gullet into your vault. This is done by taking the top numbers and putting them in one at a time. So you must start with whatever is at the top of your gullet and then set it aside into your vault. While on the Aether, you can also take the land action. 
This will move you from the Aether onto any shard hex that is adjacent to Aether. So you can either move it here, here, basically all around the perimeter, or you can put it onto any one of the hexes that is adjacent to exposed Aether. Moving from the Aether onto the shard where a frog is, is a sneaky way to initiate an attack. I've already mentioned the raid action, which is stealing from another frog's vault. This can be done as a separate action from attacking itself and getting that free raid action. And finally, when you're in the Aether, you're able to take the recover action, which will move the expended oomph and put it back up to the top there. During your turn, you may spend additional oomph to take an additional action. Let me give you an example. Frog is on the Aether. He's going to take the land action and hop on top of this lake highland. Then this frog was going to spend two oomph to take an additional action and harvest that top tile and put it into their gullet. At the beginning of the game, each player will be given an ability card, which they will read and then flip over in secret. At any time, a player may flip over their ability card and at any time in the game where it's applicable, they may use said abilities. Some of them cost additional oomph, while others are more of a passive ability. The last subject I want to go over is siphons. A siphon is a collection of the same land domain, and it must have a low land on the bottom, a high land in the middle, and a low land up top. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it useful, please like or subscribe, and we'll see you next time.